Uh, so Ben, welcome to uh, episode four of the Whole Man Academy podcast. I had to think about what number it was then because we've done so many. Um, and how are you today? Yeah, very well, um, considering. Um, yeah, surreal times, uh, but just trying to, um, with everything I'm sure we'll go through in detail, but just trying to plan as best we can um, for everything, <laughs> for everything we've got going on, businesses and um, just our personal life, um, just trying to plan for the next three months and maybe longer for as, uh, as best we can. And I guess for all of us, it's the, it's the unknown. We've spoken in the previous podcast about uncertainty. It's not like we're saying uh, in three months or whatever, this is going to be over. So yeah. I guess for all of us with, with different businesses, what have you, you're, you're trying to you know, keep various plates spinning at the moment. Yeah. So um, with the property business, um, we've just gone through a of our portfolio of stuff that we've got currently um tenanted um we've gone through the numbers the ins and outs of absolutely everything so that we know what our break-even figure is um how much we need to earn uh, per month to cover everything um if no one pays our rent what do we do we've emailed mortgage companies um we've emailed the letting agents to be proactive and say can you let us know as soon as any tenants contact you um and that sort of process of thinking the worst of everything so that right okay if no one pays if we have got to pay all the mortgages if we have got to pay all the bills we have tenants do move out how much is that figure what yeah. do we need to do how long can we last for what so that sort of thinking process is what we're doing with everything with property and with Benny's and with our personal life yeah I guess what that shows at least for uh, for all of us we know that you know this is probably the most important time of anyone's life to stay calm. Yeah. Because when you have got all these different things to sort out, I mean, in a way for a, let's say when I was an employee in a way it's easy for you because you either get sent home and you're being paid X percentage of a salary. And in theory, you haven't got anything else on, on that side to worry about. But if you've got your own business and or you're self-employed and you employ people and you've got online stuff, it's, it's a new world altogether. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I've got a lot of friends that are self-employed that they've been hit already. Stuff like um, chaps that look like working barbers, um, like they're shut. Uh, people that own gyms had to shut the gyms. Yeah. Um, so some we're lucky in respects that we've got different. We've got Benny's. We've got property. I've got football. Um, we've got different um, revenues coming in. Yeah. Or potentially coming in. Um, but for some people that have literally just got the one income stream, self-employed, they're literally stopped. So for us, we're lucky in respect that we've got multiple, as like I say, multiple avenues, but there is a chance that Benny's could not sell anything. We yeah. could not get anything and football stops. And then we are at square one. So it's now, like you say, such a crucial time to stay calm. And that's what we're trying to do as, as best we can is, like I say, is, is stay positive, but plan for the worst. So we are planning, I know I said three months, but we're planning for the foreseeable that, okay, how long can we last? Whether that's three months, six months, 12 months. Yeah. Um, but also not, not just as a time now for first things first is protect ourselves. How can we protect ourselves as best we can? But also like what you guys are doing with the podcast is, right, how can we, one, help people. Two, if no one's buying anything, how can we create content and stuff that people are going to, stuff that might help, stuff that might people might enjoy, um, stuff that if you can get an engagement and following behind you in this time um, and try and do that, that when things do go better, come for the better, that you have increased your following at the very least. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that, that's that sort of our mindset at the moment it's a lot to consider um well let's let's get started with the first part of it which was the the reason we actually became um in contact was through, i mean through the whole man academy through um one of your friends and one of my friends so um for those that don't know you've supported the whole man academy firstly by coming on to some of the events and you've always given the guys who speak at our events um some of the benny's products 
yeah. um, which we really appreciate. So what, why for you, why did you get involved with the Whole Man Academy? What was it about it that kind of you know, spoke to you? So um, the biggest thing for us, obviously, was um, at, it sort of happened at the same time. So I had a friend of mine um, that committed suicide through mental health. Um, and I'd met him two weeks before he committed suicide and um, you wouldn't have known. You knew he had some problems, but nothing, you would never have known that he would have gone to the lengths he did. And at that time, it was just, um, I'd heard about you guys, let's say through a mutual friend, and it just sort of sat right that we need, to, like we, with our Benny's products, um, we can help people, men mainly, for either having a shave, um, doing their hair. In some way, our products can help people day to day. So the message that now we're trying to get across and why I'm so passionate about the, like working with you guys is that that feeling of when you get your hair cut, no matter what you say, unless they've done a terrible job, unless you come out of a usually you come out of the barbers a little bit taller than when you walked in. Really sharp. Yeah, you do. You just feel a little bit better about yourself. You, your hair's done, you had a shave, beard trim, whatever it was. You just, fit, no matter what happens, you do generally feel a bit better about yourself. So what we've tried to do is, um, over the past year or so, um, is try and get that message across that even just a simple shave at the start of every day or doing your hair, can make you leave the house just that little bit more confident about yourself, that little yeah. bit more, you feel like you can go out and achieve something or do something, or you'll, be, you'll say hello to someone when you normally wouldn't have done because you feel ashamed about your appearance or you just don't feel right, that our products can potentially have that. Even if it takes a month or it takes six months or it takes a hundred shaves or whatever if for some brief moment at some time our products can help someone yeah then that's the message you want to get across and with you guys have the same sort of moral compass of what you're trying to do and how you're trying to help people just fits so well with how we are as a brand and how we feel about men's health um men's mental health and just day-to-day -day life of being a man and the stresses and struggles that you go through, it just resonates so well with us, which is, I say, why I've always wanted to do things with you guys and um, what we'll continue to do so for as, as long as we can. Well, that, that touches on, especially that, you know, what seems simple about, again, maybe doing your hair, being, you know, having either trimming your beard or shaving before you go out you know some of that speaks back to when we had david gandhi at our event and we spoke through you know strength through style um and aligned with we always say about a morning routine you know how important it is for you know, it doesn't matter if you're a footballer a businessman you know whatever job you're doing if you're you know if you're working in the city that you know we're not saying it's the it's the answer to all your problems is looking good but what we're saying is for the majority of guys we all know that either putting a suit on or you know taking care of your appearance hopefully makes you feel um you know makes you feel better and, and and we've used the word sharp a bit as you say, have your hair cut and you come out and you know you feel a bit kind of feel a bit better when you leave yeah. um, and how, how if we're going to touch on morning routine i mean we'll, we'll come on to the football in a minute but um do you think for yourself that has helped you and do you have a particular morning routine yeah so um we have other morning and weekly routine so um, for example, Sunday um, evening, we plan the week, try and plan it almost to the minute of what you're doing, what time you get up, what time you have breakfast, you do a workout, what time you read, um, how long you read for, you do your emails at a certain time. So it, there was, um, I can't remember the name, there was a, um, a Navy general uh, or a Navy sergeant that was um, said about the first thing you should do when you get up is make your bed because mm. it's... No, no one can take that away from you. You've achieved something in your day, even if it's yeah. a simple task of just making your bed, that that is something to get you off on a good foot. So if you can achieve little wins in the morning before you start in that first hour that you, you read for half hour, you write your goals, you set out your, your tasks for the day, you have your breakfast, you do some exercise, what, 
in that first hour and a half that you're up, you could achieve seven or eight things that make no difference over the course of a day or a week, but over the course of a month, six months, and a year. Mm. If you read every day, you do exercise, even if it's 10 press ups a day, yeah. you do that every day consecutively. You just, all right, it gets into a routine, but like it might get a bit boring and mundane, but if you consecutively do that, you consecutively read inspirational books, books that help you with your mental health, books that help you with your business, it will help you no end. And that's something that has been a big help for us is having a structure to your week, your day. Otherwise, you just float through the day and you feel like you haven't accomplished anything, you haven't done anything. And that's when you start to think, I didn't do anything today. Like, I don't, like, and you, you start straight away go, oh, what did I do today? Whereas if you have that list like we do on a Sunday of all your businesses, so what do I need to do for bellies? What do I need to do for property? What have I got on football-wise? What have I got on personal-wise? All my meetings, I plan everything out so that one, it's not chaos. Yeah. And, <laughs> and two, that you actually write, okay, I need to do that. I need to prepare for that. And you're constantly focused on achieving things, even if it's little things like print off uh, documents to sign. Like something that simple, but I've ticked it off, I've done it. And that's just a little thing in your brain will say, I've achieved something and done something. So how do you keep us, track of it, Ben? Kind of how uh, do you, let's say on a Sunday night, we're sitting down and you're, do, do you write it out or do you do it on uh, email or on, a, on an app? Or? Um, I use Google Calendar for my diary. Um, I've got a, a handwritten diary for notes and when I'm going to meetings and out day to day. Um, and then on pages, I break, um, I've got a to-do list that is broken down into businesses and then it's subsided into, into so for example, Benny's will be um, to-do list for UK, to-do list for EU, for property it will be um, to-do list for um, each property company each site and then there'll be that will be broken down and I put um, everything unbold and then stuff that's urgent I put in bold and so that I know right and then I'll, I'll work through on that Sunday I'll work through right what are the top things of each individual section that I need that need to get done or that are going to earn me money or not lose me money and then, right, okay, they're the first things that I do on a Monday, mm-hmm. get through them, and then sort of filter out throughout the rest of the week. Try and stick to property in the morning, Benny's in the afternoon, but that's something that I need to improve on is not letting stuff distract, especially at the moment where mm. a lot of things are important. You need to try and even be more strict that, like, okay, I know – dealing with uh, an import from Benny's is important or dealing with an order is important, but I have to get these mortgages sorted. So try and, so it's, it's trying to balance that, but yeah. But, you know, for, if people aren't even sure, you, you know, also you've had to maintain, you know, elite physical health um, to be able to play football. So how have you, we're we going to come on to the actual playing football, but for you, how do you find the time to put in the, the fitness side as well? Is it that you'd go out, and, at the moment, no one's going to the gym, but let's pretend that the world is back to uh, two weeks ago when it was mildly normal. Yeah. How did you manage to fit in the, the fitness as well as it sounds like you've got a shitload of stuff that you're trying to deal with as well? Yeah, so um, up till last year, I was playing full-time, um, which was Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with um, a lot of the times in the National League, it was games, so we'd have Tranmere away, Barrow away on a Tuesday night and you'd be leaving all day and so it was just that was really hard and that's why I took the drop down to um, part-time football is because it was just taking up so much time and I physically did not have the time to to do everything but again that comes back to the planning of Google I put in what I know what time I leave for training on a Tuesday Thursday I know what game I've got if I've got an away game then I know I need to leave earlier, so I can only do a certain amount Saturday morning. Yeah. And it's just all planning what we do. So I work, uh, I train Tuesday, Thursday evenings, 
Um, sometimes the games are Tuesday evenings. Um, but throughout the day, and this is something, again, I can be better on, but I try and do, even if it's uh, 25 push-ups in the morning or 25 sit-ups or something, I'm, I'm doing a thing at the moment. I've done it every day for the last probably 10, 12 days is the, the bring Sally up, bring Sally down, push up challenge. Yeah. How are you finding uh, it? So I've hit a barrier for the last three <laughs> days. I've got to one minute 30 yep. and I can't pass it where it's just a mental block or I don't know, but, um, but even that it's not, it's not a full gym routine. It's not, but it's something, um, yeah. we've done a, me and my partner, Samantha, we've done, um, gone out and done a couple of runs early morning. Um, just 10 minute runs when no one's about just to get out of the house and do something. So there is time and there's so much that like I've, I've taken screenshots this morning of um, like what we're doing, creating more social content. There's so many, where so many gyms have closed. Mm. A lot of forward thinking people are creating so much gym content of home workout programs, um, natural, uh, the, where you're lifting your own body weight. Yeah. like workouts and things like that. There's so much stuff out there that you can do. Like we've got a uh, two steps that lead into our kitchen like that in itself. I can do an upper body, uh, an upper chest and a lower chest just yeah. by doing that. Um, yeah, no excuse is there for not, I mean the, the, the big thing at the moment in the last day or two, I mean, recording this on, on the Monday when we assume the country is or should about to be going to lockdown. And a lot yeah. of people are saying, oh, well, I have to get outside because I have to do exercise. And you're like, that's not good enough excuse to be going out, out at the moment because there's about 500 billion videos online if you're doing any yeah. type of fitness. Yeah. There's, there's, uh, so we've got a couple of friends that are, are PTs and they've created HIIT programs for mm -hmm. indoor. So you can have a metre square space. That is all you need. And you can do a full-on hour HIIT program yeah. and get more of an exercise than you would by running outside for three miles yeah it's a bit like saying let you know when you finish the hours hit training and it's not been enough for you then i'll let you go outside and you know then i'll give you permission to go out for a run yeah. um, so so if we're going into football as it were when did you start playing football as a uh, uh professionally uh so um i've played football since i was four or five years old um I've been playing for professional clubs since I was seven, eight years old, um, two, training two, three times a week. Um, then went full-time at 16. Um, and I was full-time till I was about 20. I had a couple of years where I was part-time. And then we went back into full-time um, for the last four years. Um, and then, yeah, dropped down at the end of last season. Now back into how was it for you? Because I know there's there's such a, a huge difference between the you know if you're if you're a top Premier League club and you're earning a huge you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands a week to obviously dropping down one league or two leagues. So were you always confident that you could continue to uh, play as a professional footballer, or, or have any times where you thought I'm not sure about this? Well, there's throughout my the ninety percent of my career. It was all I wanted to do was just play football. There was not nothing else. I was so adamant that that is what I wanted to do. And I didn't really understand then, like I didn't read, I didn't listen to audio books. I didn't do anything that I didn't set myself goals. There was no structure. I just, I want to be a footballer and that is it. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. yeah I practiced as much as I could, but there was no, if, if I knew now what I knew as far as like, how you structure a business, how you plan, how can I improve, how can I, yeah. what, what am I not good at, what am I good at? If I would have had that knowledge in football, I would have, I would have done things different. I might have gone on further. I don't, I don't know. But I think it would just be that you might have started a business earlier. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's the thing. is I, I started the business when I was 25, 26, and straight away that, changed my thought process sort of straight away is that I can earn football doesn't last forever mm -hmm. I'm going to get to a stage and I was speaking to people at the time that were coming out of the game at sort of 33 34 35 
had no had no career, had no qualifications, had no experience, had no other form of income, yeah. and was saying how hard it is, and you need to like pre- like prepare yourself. And so, when we started the businesses, it started off as I'll be able to do both. It's fine. I still love football, and it just over time has gradually swung the other way where you realise that, especially at the level that I was at, it'd be different maybe if you're at a premiership level and you know that you've got a free four-year contract or you're, you've got money saved from the amount of money you've earned. But at a lower league level, it's very much contract to contract. You're like, and it's, they only usually offer one-year, two-year deals. And yeah. um, that in itself is not secure enough for like to live to have a family and it's like long term lack of certainty yeah and now it was getting to that so you get to february march april and if your contract was up you'd you could have a mortgage and all your bills going out and you could find out in two weeks time that actually they're not offering you new deal you haven't got a club and you're like well how am i gonna pay for everything and it was it's like that for 95 percent of the football population that it is almost year to year and you do need I felt that I started I think I started early compared to most that I didn't want to leave that to chance each year and especially now in in situations like this I think if if I didn't have what I have there's a lot of people out there that are solely dependent upon their football income that you really don't know. Even at the best of times, there's a lot of clubs that go into administration, have money problems. Yeah. It's not usually renowned other than the Premiership and Elite that clubs are run yeah. effectively enough to... I guess we've also seen that, you know, it's no guarantee of financial security just because you're a Premier League player. I know I've read about it where some, you know, plays, it just means that you've got probably a, a bigger house, a faster car, you know, more expensive holidays. And then suddenly when it, it all ends and you're maybe in your thirties or you're young and you get injured, yeah. it is that thing of what, what else do you go and do to earn anything like that kind of money? Also doing yeah. something you love. Yeah. The, and the short answer is there isn't much mm. that you can go to that earns you that sort of money especially in a transition of such a short period of time to get yourself back up to that level. And that's, unfortunately, I don't know the, the full, how much the FA are involved in the younger generation of coming through um, and how much they actually help people. But the knowledge that I know now and that some people do, if I could share that with the football world, some people might not choose to use it. Some people might already know it. Yeah. But if you, if people know that, right, okay, it's not going to last forever, you might want to have a £5 million house and a £30,000 worth a month going out on cars, holidays and everything else. But actually, if you just set aside, even from when you start, you set aside 10% of that or a percentage of that into property or into shares or into a yeah. business or something, that you don't have to be your full your um sole focus but just chip away and save and put away to know that okay you live a certain lifestyle great but you want to know that come 34 35 or if you get injured at any time or the club go into administration or whatever reason you at least have got something there to fall back on that's gonna at least help you i guess yeah so yeah. what would it work like on them um... It's funny, we've got a, we, we put on Instagram also that we were speaking to you, to you today and asked if people wanted to ask questions. So I've got a couple of uh, uh, yeah. good questions for you as well. But what was it like on, on match day to you? Now, we, we spoke to some people who um, would, you know, obviously naturally maybe feel nerves, but were you always pretty relaxed on a match day and did it depend on if it was home or away? Um, sometimes... So a lot of the time you have the belly, like pre-game, pre-game nerves. You can be relaxed, and, but you still get that little nervous feeling of like you're about to kick off and like it's, you're excited. And, and then you have some games, especially when you play like at the, the bigger grounds and you, 
playing sort of for me like a big crowd like five six seven eight thousand people like was like a good crowd like you're there's no better feeling than playing in front like you just your adrenaline just takes over and it's such a, it's such a good feeling um but as far you sort of again you put into a bit of a pattern a, a routine of what you're doing you eat a certain i passed the night before have a certain scrambled egg in the morning yeah. by the so you just have your routine of what you do yeah. um and yeah would, would, would the club tell you what you should or shouldn't eat or would they guide you or kind of leave you to to make a you know a, your own yeah, so you have um throughout most of my career you get given like diet plans of what you not exactly what you should eat but just a rule of thumb of what you should eat and you sort of know where it gets embedded into you from quite a young age we where i played when we was younger they were very good on um what you eat you sleep how you should prepare and so that got embedded at quite a young age that right you don't go out obviously the night before or 48 hours before a game um you what type of foods lots of carbs pastas which i'm sure dietary things have changed like through scientific over the last couple of years but that's been my routine and that's what i have and um yeah that that, that worked for me for having them and when, when you're um when you have away games um a lot of the times you stay in hotels the night before and like you get food put on for you so you you have everyone will know like football will know you have like dry chicken dry pasta um broccoli um what else do you have dry chicken pasta baked beans scrambled egg and it's all in one meal like you never normally have that meal but it's <laughs> all in one so yeah so that the, the club put on certain things and they give you like um let's like say dietary requirements fitness requirements that you you can do from home and yeah. bits and pieces so they genuinely do look after you in that respect well, let's let's ask you one of the questions, which was one of them was actually kind of as you said about what was your pre-game meal, um, which I guess you've kind of answered. But also, it was uh, one of the questions was what's the or who's the best player you've ever played against? Um, best player. So for me, I, I play right back, um, and oh, what's his name? I can't think of his name now. There was a uh, Matt Jarvis, was a left winger for West Ham. Right. We played him in a pre season friendly, and I've never, ever had such a hard afternoon in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> because... I remember the centre half next to me said, uh, Right, he's left footed, show him, uh, show him inside. So I showed him inside, and he crossed it with his right, like, unbelievable cross. And he was like, Oh, maybe he's right footed. Show him down the line. So I showed him down the line. <laughs> He beat me down the line, crossed it. I was like, he was just so sharp. Over five, ten yards, he yeah. was just so sharp. So what would you, now, uh, how, many, how many years ago was that? Seven, eight yeah. years ago. So if you were speaking to a young footballer now who was going to face that situation, what would, knowing what you know now, what advice would there be? Would it just be to drop off and try and, um, what would you say? So I was... I was never like the quickest. I had a little bit of pace, but never usually the quickest. So I remember we played um, Arsenal in a friend friendly, and uh, we had who's our uh, Rosiski, right? Uh, Mark and I was like, right, I'm just gonna have to smash him first, like the old early, <laughs> and and I've done it, and it just everyone kicked off. And to be fair, he was so good that it didn't make a difference anyway. He was, yeah. he was so fast, but. Yeah. yeah, anyone in that situation, you have to element of respect that they're good, they're quick, their movement is incredible and just work as hard as you can, do as best you can and try and be ha have that structure of like, right, my job is this, I'm meant to show them down the line, do what you can and then go again. Sometimes when they're that good, there's literally nothing what do you, you can do. Yeah, I mean, imagine what it's like for people when they were playing Gareth Bale or something like that. That's what I think. Like in that situation, like for me, playing against someone like that, like there was nothing I could do. He was that sharp. And then you play, you see people that make them how look how I looked against him, but at like that level, so you think how good must they be? Yeah, 
yeah, different, really? different parts all together. But one yeah. of the questions was, um, and I, I think I know the answer to this because I had a look through your Instagram. What's the shortest match you've ever played? <laughs> so <laughs> I, um, I went, uh, I went travelling um, one season. Uh, we went. I had about three months off, three or four months off. Uh, me and my partner went travelling. And it was during the season, and I was at Bournemouth at the time, and they were so good. They said, look, play until you go. Um, obviously, don't get paid when you go, but when you get back, as long as you're fit and whatever, like, we'll get back in the squad and you get back in the team. So, anyway, so got back, first game back, uh, they said, half time, none of you coming on. So I was like, right, okay, brilliant. Like, I, was so, I was so ready to go to get back playing, and within four minutes I got sent off last man tackle yeah yeah well so for three months while we was traveling as oh I can't wait to get back to football was over in about five minutes yeah what goes through, with 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 that situation do you um oh no there's a couple of questions here, but are you someone that has had many uh, red cards before um I've had one or two and that is that is literally one or two um but they've never been for Descent or like real like nasty challenges. It's been for like a, a last man, yeah. second yellow. Um, but do you think as you go to make the tackle, do you know in that split second, do you make the tackle and then think about the red card or do you think it flashes through your mind as you're doing it? Uh, you know, I'm taking one for the team. There's that occasion I was like, he was through on goal and I was the last man. I was like, I either bring him down outside the box and I get sent off or he goes through and scores. And at the time it was probably the wrong thing to do because then we had to play 40 minutes with 10 men. Um, but there's sometimes when you go into a challenge and you're like, in your head, you're like, you're so committed to yeah. winning the challenge. You're <laughs> like, I'm probably going to be late in this, but you're, you're already committed and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going for it. And <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next one was the best ground you've ever played at. Um, so this is not necessarily like the best as in what it looks like, but uh, we had, um, Tranmere away, um, yeah. and that holds sort of 20,000, but the time they were getting promoted at the time and they were flying and you was playing and you could not hit, you couldn't speak to so the center half. I was telling him to squeeze up. And he couldn't hear me for what I was saying. And right. yeah, it's just a, like I say, it's, it's nothing special. But for me, it was like yeah. to play in that sort of atmosphere where you physically cannot hear someone 15 yards away from you. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it was good. Real good. Next one is, now, I appreciate that the obvious answer um, for most people would say scoring a goal here. But as you're a defender and I played as a defender for many years, so I, I know that yeah. my answer to this might have been different to what most people expect. but What's your best feeling as a footballer on the pitch? Um, so, when, obviously, defending when you when you when you block an online like a, got, um, a shot on the line or something like that. Um, but from a non-selfish point of view, the best feeling is if you're losing or drawing and you've got a couple of minutes to go and you get a late equaliser or a late winner. Yeah. That feeling of We've done it, like we we've nicked it, or that feeling because your your whole team are feeling that feeling of we've just nicked it, or we've we've come back, or we've equalised, or so yeah, that 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 is good. The feeling of scoring a goal as well for someone that doesn't score many. Yeah, is, uh, as a, as a defender, it's you know unless you're Van Dijk at the moment, it's still you're still not going to get double figures a season. So um, it's, not with my shooting ability. So does that mean um, where were you? Um, when Man United um, beat Bayern Munich and came back to win the uh, Champions League, I was, I was at home. I was, I, I was living with mum and dad back at home. Um, yeah, and that that was like, you just you can't you can't, you can't make that sort of stuff. That just doesn't happen ever. Um, yeah, that is surreal. It's a special. But, yeah. Funny it could happen for England and Tottenham. Yeah, good, good luck with that. Yeah. Well, well move, moving um, on from football, 
on to personal development. Um, I know you're to study always interested in business and success and, and helping people and doing things differently. So talk to me about you, yourself with your kind of journey into personal development. I know on your Instagram, you've got pictures of uh, books written by Gary Vaynerchuk, Robert Kiyosaki, people like that. So tell us a bit about how personal development works for you. Um, so it, it all started with, uh, we read a book, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, and that, as soon as we read that, that just was like a light bulb moment, changed our mindset completely. Um, and from then on, we've, we've got nearly 100 books on business owners, businesses, self-help improvement, mindset. Um, and so I, I read a lot. Um, I, I went through a phase, a couple of years of loads of audios in the car. Um, and now I sort of, you, there's still times when you do that, but there's times when I figured out where I read in the, like most mornings or sometimes in the evenings as well. Um, you figure out what works for you and sometimes like even just like listening to music that you like, that is just as good as, all right, it's not as informative, but from a personal mindset point of view, there's times when I think, oh, I just want to escape like business and what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing, and actually just listen to a bit of music that I really like. And that takes you back to a place or takes you forward to a place where you think I'm going to listen to that when I'm by the pool or yeah. that walk or whatever. It sounds like um, that's um, a bit like we try and help guys understand that sometimes taking time to, we call it settling your mind, um, yeah. can really help because I guess, same for yourself, you've got multiple businesses and probably various email addresses and things to keep kind of juggling at the same time we always say it's a bit like um a snow globe you know a lot of people at the moment if you shake the snow globe it's it's you know there's just so much going on where it's actually saying you know what works for you how can you stop and let the snow settle so it's clear yeah. for you um so for you if you had to pick one thing if you were having one of those days where you're like there's stuff happening and this is going wrong and what have you if you had a half hour, where, where would you go with helping settle your mind? So I, I was, I've never meditated per se, as like fully. I've, I've done, I've tried it and I, I actually think it's great. I, don't, I should do it more often. Um, but the big switch for me, um, I've, I've got it here just in case, is the Robin Sharma, the, um, right. that one. So might not be everyone's cup of tea, but for me, it allowed me to think a lot more of actually about my mind and how much you can have control of your mind. Um, not just control over, like, I think I've got good um, structure to my biz our businesses and how we operate and how we do our to-do lists and everything like that, but actually, structuring your mind and training your mind to switch off and be calm and like if you, if you used to say to anyone right for a, for a minute i want you to sit in silence and not think of anything mm. but I, I guarantee 98 percent of people wouldn't be able to do it they would their mind would be distracted from something something would come in a holiday a business a thought or something and so in that it sort of teaches you how you different techniques some are a bit out there but some of like actually you just shut off and just think of one thing so like in the book it's like um is it looking at a rose but i do like either a candle or you have just a clear thought of nothing and you constantly you think uh, a thought comes in and then you try and get clear again and you keep trying to work on it and work on it. And over time, you'll practice. In there, it says about like, if you want to be um, a bodybuilder, you train your body. Yeah. And if you want to be an accountant, you learn accountancy. You read books, you train accountancy. If you want to train your mind, no one, there's, you don't know what to do. So in there, it there's some real good things in there about training your mind to actually have control of when you get annoyed, when you're happy, when you're sad, like 
in a split second you can make yourself feel good or bad about whatever situation it is. Um, and that's something that has been a big help for us and for me when there's times when I think stuff's going wrong or whatever. I'm letting my mind tell me that I should be feeling down about this situation. Whereas if, I, if you was to flip the situation, like oh, everything's going wrong, and then you was walking down the street and you bumped into someone that the last time you see them, you had the best time with them, without you even realizing, you would straight away, you'd sort of flip into like a, how you doing, all right? Like you're, you're telling yourself, and then they like said a joke or done something, and you, yeah. you forget that you was annoyed about whatever you was annoyed about, because your brain is telling you to be annoyed or not be annoyed. I guess that's a bit like when we say you have your state has changed. Um, yeah. I guess that's a, you know, that's a big thing for personal development from probably one of the greatest guys, Tony Robbins, who work on, you know, a state change for us all. It'd yeah. be about, you know, are you, how are you, how are you standing or how are you sitting? How are you breathing, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I guess you bump into someone and it, it changes your state and your physiology. Yeah. That, that, so, that's just like one example of like, say of bumping into someone but if you're at home and you look at a picture or you listen to a certain song or something can can switch you out of that like almost spiraling mindset if your day is going that way if you look at spend five minutes you're like oh look at what holiday you went on or what holiday you're gonna go on or so, i don't know so, so whatever it is that yeah. makes you happy or your your things in life that you're I guess, you in what, I guess is what you're focusing on yeah, yeah. As you say um i know we've you know spoke a bit to guys through the whole man academy that um you know we talk, again talking about gratitude is you know saying right well give us give us a couple of things you're grateful for um you know if you're focusing on the stuff that's not going right in your life you know could you flip it around and focus on what is going right you know what has gone right um, which probably could apply to, as, as we said, sportsmen, businessmen, everything. Well, let's talk about business now because uh, obviously with Benny's, you know, for the guys that, that don't know, I mean, you create, um, what did you say, Benny's high quality luxury products um, and, it's, and it's what for shaving beards, hair? Yeah, so uh, we started with a shaving brush um, and real off the cuff, wanted to sell something online, didn't know what we was gonna do. Somehow, don't even know, come across a shaving brush, was like, yeah. right, yeah, we'll brand it, Benny's of London, and then, um, yeah, it literally went from there. They started selling and we've added more products and it's sort of grown, grown from there. So yeah, so that's, we're now going into more um, cosmetic side, so body washes, aftershaves, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Don't really shaving, but now got hair products, um, creams, balms. Like I say, yeah, going into more aftershaves and body washes, moisturisers. And how how did you start with? Because obviously the game has changed now, where you're not necessarily looking for a, a high street stockist because the world's gone online. So for yourself. Um, where did you start with the decision of where to stock your um, or your Benny's products? So we done a um, originally we done a course on uh, how to sell on Amazon, um, which taught you how to spot opportunities, find products, and so we done that. And one of the things that came up was a shaving brush, and so we start our whole business started on Amazon. Um, right. And it grew from there. And we was like, we could sell individual products or we could sell, continue this and actually create a brand. And we felt that was more sustainable in growing a brand rather than just niche individual products. Um, and so that's what we've done. And from there, we obviously set up our website and the website's grown and we've now established ourselves as sort of high up in the market in that industry as sort of being one of the competitors obviously not not quite harry's level something like that yet but hopefully we'll get to get to that stage and for yourself um where where do you want benny's to go is it just a continuation of the let's call it the men's cosmetics range yeah so um ideally we want the brand to i don't know if i want it to get to a harry's level where it's 
in every single store, like boots, Sainsbury, test. I don't want it to get to that. I want it to be a bit of a premium, mm. a bit of a luxury, but still, I know it's the whole cliche of luxury, but affordable, but that's what I want it to be is affordable for an everyday man, but it looks like it should be worth a hell of a lot more than what it is. And yeah. the thing we've, we've spent a long time on, which wire products have taken quite a while to come out in regards to the, the hair products and the creams and balms is we, we've spent so much time in testing and getting the products to such a good quality because we want people to go, oh, that's cheap, I'll, I'll try that. And then try to go actually go, oh my God, how good's that? Like that initial reaction of they didn't expect it to be that good for that cheap. Uh, and so we want to continue growing it. We want it to be somewhere where men can go and they can almost have all their bases covered of if they, they, for, for treatment and products in that sense. We won't go into clothing or anything like that, but we may branch into ties or cufflinks or yeah. notebooks or so, something. The yeah. I see you do a wash bag as well. Yeah. Um, so do you, I mean, I guess that's where you move from, you know, you can buy the wash bag on its own. So therefore it, that has become a product that's not a beauty product as such, but it's, yeah. it's kind of part of it. So as you yeah. say, that is that somewhere where you think, because your branding and everything is cool as well, isn't it? You know, a lot of it is black and white and the, the, the Instagram all flows nicely. Um, is that where you see kind of um, the extra parts of the company coming from? Yeah, that's, so we want to get to, uh, the range to a certain level, um, which well, how it is at the moment, I've, I'm, I'm happy with where it is. We want, obviously want to keep adding and we've got products in production that will be coming soon that will, I feel, give a real broad range for our products that people can go on. And we're not just a shaving brand. We've got hair products, we've got aftershaves, we've got body washes. Um, but the next thing for us is, and something that we've not done at all, um, which we're our whole focus has been for this year. Obviously, had no idea that this was going to happen um, under the current circumstances. But we've never done any wholesale, so we've never we've never wholesale to barbers. We've never wholesale to companies. We've not gone into any shops. We've not gone into any marketplaces. Purely for the fact that, obviously, going through what my schedule is like with property, with football. We've just not had the time. And it is, we've literally serviced the demand. That is all we've had time to do. Yeah. Um, whereas now, going from full-time to part-time football, it's allowed me to spend a lot more time and focus on, on the business rather than being in it. Mm -hmm. uh, which is then we've looked at like, right, okay, Amazon's doing well, the website's doing well. What are we not doing? And for a lot of people, a lot of businesses, wholesale is where the large majority of their production and, and revenue is. And that's something that we've not done anything. So for us, it's actually quite exciting that we got to where we got to without any form of wholesale, yeah. that there's a whole massive market there that we've not touched. And we've managed to build a reputation, um, not just with customers, but with in the industry of who we are and what we do without having any wholesale. So that's, yeah. that's a big step for us. We're talking of, um, for, for guys that are listening that are interested in how do you even start with selling a product on Amazon? So yeah. I don't expect you to have to take me through the whole process, but what advice would you give to a guy who wanted to start selling something on Amazon? Where, where would he even start? So there are, there are courses. Um, I'm not specifically not going to recommend any yeah. purely because we done our course five, six years ago. And I've got no idea what they're doing now, whether they still exist, whether they've the price increased, they've dropped yeah. or whatever. So, but there are courses out there to teach you to how to sell on Amazon. Um, but it's, it's like anything. It's when you're on Amazon, it's looking at products, this whole supply demand. Is there any product? So just the basic rule of thumb is if you go onto a listing, say for example, lunch boxes, yeah. Uh, type in lunch boxes in Amazon. And if it comes up that the say top five or six, you look at have they got good images? Um, have they got good um titles? So if it says lunchbox and that's it. Yeah. Whereas if you've got one that says 
lunchbox family size pack for your everyday lunch treatment sandwiches and yeah. like that's good because it's like that's a, a competitive yeah that, that's a comp uh, a competitive uh, retailer so you then need to look right so have they got good images have they got good titles have they got good reviews so if you find that your top five products in your market that you're potentially looking to get into you look at their price, their reviews, their title, um, and the images, and if all five of the top ones in that bracket are competitive, then it's gonna be a hard market to get into. Whereas if you type in lunch boxes and the top one's got three reviews and the second one's got bad images and the third one's got a poor title, then you know that potentially there's a, a niche, there's a little window of opportunity there that you can get in get a couple of good reviews up, get a good title, good images, and you potentially can, can make the most of that. But you, yeah. there's different tools that you can use to search keyword demand. Are people searching for that product? There's loads of different things to, to consider, but the basic one is checking, one, your competitor's market, and two, yeah. is there a demand for what you're potentially selling? We're back on without any, uh, any battery problems. Um, so just, just wrapping up, um, on the football side of it for you, where are you with it now? Uh, so cu currently uh, we've been told that obviously we're not playing at the moment. Um, my contract's up at the end of the season. Um, so I don't foresee us going back um, because of what's obviously what's going on. I don't, see, I don't know how that will end or how it will happen, but I don't foresee us going back. Um, what will happen next year for me, I, I really don't know. Um, a lot of it will depend on what happens with the business. I may need to go back. Um, football may not be on. I, I, re I really don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, I still enjoy it. It's still like a, a release. It's still time for me to get out because I work for myself, the property business myself, Benny's is myself. It's, it's a chance for me to actually interact with the outside world yeah. and um, have that bit of a release. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, in all honesty, I'm, I'm fit enough and I, I, I want to do it, but it's just whether um, it, it depends what happens with the, the economy and yeah. business. And, the unknown yeah. at the moment. Well, yeah. and as a last thing, uh, well, what we want to do is get you back on at some point to talk purely about property development because i realized that um you know a couple of people that had more questions which we could probably fill yeah. another hour of talking about that because it's yeah. it's a hot thing at the moment and it will be very soon in a few months hopefully when things calm down yeah. um, you know everybody at the moment is kind of maybe watching and waiting for the property market to change but just going back to football one last thing if you had to give some advice to a, a you know a young footballer like a, a teenager who's looking to get into being a professional footballer um, yeah. having, having gone through a lot of it yourself, what advice would you give them? Um, from uh, the mental side of the game, which a lot of it is, um, is take the ups with the downs. Um, there's so many ups and downs, and it change every if football changes so quickly. You can be the worst thing in the world. You can score an own goal on a Saturday and be the worst thing in the world. The fans hate you and you get stick online and like the manager's annoyed. And you, you could be, it could all go wrong. Yeah. You play on Tuesday and you score the winner and you are the best thing. Everyone's celebrating and it literally changes that fast. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, the main thing is just try and stay as neutral as possible. Obviously enjoy the highs, but don't get too down with the lows. And, Set yourself, for me, like the biggest thing with business, which is wish I, I wish I would have put into place with football, is setting goals of where you want to get to, what you want to do, how do I get to that? If I want to be in League One, yeah. what do I need to do to get me to League One? What ability do I need to have? How fit do I need to be? How strong do I need to be? How, like, what, how many goals do I need to score? Like, work that out of what you need to get there and then give everything you can to, to get in there. But football's such a short career, yeah. but it is a, it's an unbelievable career. And for anyone that's got the opportunity and has got the ability to to be in and around the full-time game is 
give everything you've got at it because it's such so short-lived and it is you can't you can never get back and never get emulate that feeling of scoring a goal scoring a winner playing in front of big crowds that whole build up of the game you just there's nothing else like but as far as I know there's nothing else like it that can give you that as, as you were saying that it made me think that as a let's say as a young footballer you need to understand you're actually you need to think of yourself as a small business yeah because for you you know you you might belong to one team or another or have time out but actually developing yourself and your skills um, is a you know in theory a 15 year career but you yeah. need to look at it as as you say you're as as good a commodity for uh, you know a, a football club to have as as anybody else yeah uh, so for yourself with the, with the football um, it, when you when you finish that do you think you'll continue to play football even if it's not uh, not professional um, I would imagine very rarely I would play occasionally I've where I've done it for the, the thing now is where business has obviously taken up a lot of time but football has been such a commitment for the last 20 years of my life 25 years of my life miss I know it sounds stupid but missing prom school discos never going out weekends missing holidays missing weddings christenings birthdays miss so much and I'm not saying I would change it because it was a mate like football was, was amazing. I've met so many people through football, and it's yeah. it's made who I am. Um, but the sacrifices you make along the way, um, when you're 21, 22, and all your friends are going out for the weekend, or <laughs> your um, family have got a wedding that you're meant to be at, and you can't get there till nine o'clock because that's when the bus gets back from a game, and yeah. you miss the ceremony. And I'm getting to a stage in my life where that stuff's becoming more important than a game on a Saturday. And I'm not saying that's everyone's process, but where I've gradually gone from um, being full-time and the business has grown and I've had, I, I feel like I've had a, I'm happy and content with my career and what I've done. It wasn't David Beckham's career, but for me, I got, to pay, I got paid to play football for the majority of my life, which Albeit not in a championship level, is yeah. If you'd have said that to me at a young age, you get you will be a professional footballer and you'll get paid to play football as a job. Then I'd have done everything to do that. So I'm I'm content with what I've done, um, but I'm now at a stage in my life where business, family, social events are more important. And I'm not saying going down the pub, but I'm like weddings and things like that are more important than it's a new the commitment. Yeah, yeah. Good. It's a Good. tough one. Talking to new chapters, say with with the business side of it. Perhaps um, you know at some point, say we'll get get you back on to talk about the property development side of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, which which for a lot of guys, you know, maybe they're looking to, um, I don't know allocate funds to a different or you know have a have a proper portfolio of of different kind yeah. of options. So um, maybe that's something we'll have a have a chat about. Um, but I know you're busy, so we will we will let you go. But thank you very much for for chatting to us. Oh, thank um, you. And uh, when the when the events start up again, hopefully we'll see you at one of our dinners or events. Yeah, brilliant, mate. Thank you very much. All right, Ben. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Good man. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.